I'm Aaron Baker from Phone Dog, and I'm on day four of my 30 day challenge with the Samsung Galaxy S4 smartphone. This is the international version. Hopefully, the ATT version will be in soon, but for right now, I've been working with this octa core Samsung Galaxy S4. I've had the weekend to work with it and kind of use it in my day to day life, and there are a lot of things that I love about this phone and some things that I don't care for, at least some things that I would say give me a little bit of a caution in recommending this device. It's day four. Here is what I found out about the Samsung Galaxy S4. Four. I'm on day four of my 30 day challenge with the Samsung Galaxy S4 and this like I've said in previous videos is the international version. It's got an octa core processor, really two quad core processors, one operating at 1.6 gigahertz, one operating at 1.2 gigahertz. So a little bit different from the US version and it's 1.9 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 600 CPU. That's nothing new for Samsung or quite a few other manufacturers for that matter. They will oftentimes release an international version with a different processor set or a different amount of specifications depending on what that individual market needs or that individual area needs. This is the first time I will say though that I've been more pleased with the US version than I have been the international version. And let me give you some background on how long I had the Galaxy S4. The international version arrived on Friday. So it's my first glimpse with the octa-core version, had the weekend to work with it. And I put my SIM card in this one because it's an international version and it is a GSM capable version of the Galaxy S4. I've been working with the Galaxy S4 for about a week and a half before that though with the Sprint version of the Galaxy S4 and I was under what's called a non-disclosure agreement which is very typical in our business. We'll get a device for a couple of weeks, we'll sign a non-disclosure agreement and they'll say all the reviews are embargoed until X date and then we can publish our reviews and what that does it gives us some time to get some hands on with it, to get a feel of the device and write our reviews or do our video content or whatever the case may be for your respective publications that you watch prior to going live all at the same time. So this is the international version, but I've been working with it for some time. So I'm no stranger to the Galaxy S4. I've been working with it for a few weeks, but I will say international version, not as performance happy as I would like it to be. Octa-core processor, you'd think it'd be pretty zippy. And for the most part, as you can see, it responds with ease. I mean, everything kind of fluid and moves through pretty quickly here. Little to no lag, but I find it to lag from time to time in areas where frankly, an octa-core processor with two gigabytes of RAM shouldn't lag. And it's hard to replicate on camera, but from time to time when accessing the camera application, for example, or scrolling or being in an individual application, it'll freeze up and kind of take its sweet time. And that's something for me I did not see on the US version nearly as much, if at all. And I was really pleased with the performance of the US based Galaxy S4. Now the AT&T version just arrived this morning, so we'll switch out the SIM card and use that for the duration of the 30 day challenge. And the unit, I should say, phone dog purchased from AT&T. So it actually is an AT&T uh, unit that is phone dog's unit. But it'll be on the challenge for the rest of the 30 days. And I'll put it to the test with 4G LTE and some of the US based things that we noticed that were different from the other version, the international version. Things like the dialer, for example. As you can see here, a dark dialer on the international version, much like previous Galaxy devices on the US version, it is white. So completely light, the keys are different, and the tabs are different as well. Little things like that. Now onto the software though, I find myself using these on quite a regular basis. Things like S-Beam, and then over here to my device, things like Smart Screen, Air View. I don't have Smart Stay or Smart Rotation turned on right now, but I do have Smart Scroll which I do find particularly useful. You may call those features gimmicky, but I use S-Beam on a regular basis, and I really enjoy some of the internet goodies that you get on this device. The ability to swipe, for example, over to different tabs, load up Phone Dog, which is already loaded, and I can scroll up and down on this as I see fit. So cool little features like this. I find particularly useful. And it's something that I use on a regular basis. I don't use it every day, I don't use it every minute, but you've got that as well as multi-window so you can multitask with ease on this device as well thanks to its 5 inch 1080p HD display. Also really enjoying the camera and one of my favorite features should populate, yep, there it is right there, the ability to use the front and rear facing camera at the same time. So let's say you're at a concert, you're you know, seeing a celebrity and you wanna take a picture but you wanna be in the picture for your friend. So you can snap a picture and say, hey, take a look at this cool thing that I found at the store. I'm this excited about it. And as you can see, takes the picture and you can send that over or share it via social media, etc. Very cool feature and then you can go back and change the way that that looks as well. And I find that to be kind of fun. I was playing around with that all weekend. And it's kind of fun to go in here and change it around to heart shapes or oval blur, stamp, etc. And then you have a bunch of different modes as well to choose from. I'll show you a couple of my favorites right here in the modes application. Go into mode. 
two of my favorites. Eraser is particularly useful for when something's moving quickly behind you, but the one that I used all weekend, Animated Photo. It's a fun one, and you can create a picture that's moving, and then you can block off certain parts. So if I'm moving and somebody beside me is moving, I can make the person beside me stop, but I can continue moving in the shot. And one of those shots that I took this weekend was with my cat. Again, animated photo just moving through right here, as you can see. She is moving, moving that head, rubbing up against the door, the front porch door, and just playing around and having a good time. So cool features like this really make these devices great for consumers, and it gives you choices to how you want to take your picture. Stay tuned for the 30-day challenge. Tweet me with what you want to see covered in the 30-day challenge. Phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter. I'm on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Google plus phone dog.com slash G plus. On the next video update, I will have switched over to the AT&T Galaxy S4. So we'll see some 4G LTE coverage tests and then again how the US version compares to the international version. Keep it locked right here. Stay tuned for more on the 30-day challenge. And as always, I'll see you next time.